to Planning with Crystal. Today's video is an unboxing of a box of stories, book box, book subscription and a little bit of a chat about my reading plans for 2023. So a box of stories, we've unboxed it before but not for a while, it was about time we did another video. A box of stories if you're not aware, you can have it as a book subscription, you can have it as a one-off book box but essentially they are saving books that would otherwise be thrown away which if you're a book lover like myself is kind of horrifying not gonna lie so the book boxes represent a huge saving on the rrp of the books there are lots and lots and lots of choices on the type of books you can receive in terms of genre and things of that nature you can get a subscription as low as 18.99 including free uk delivery they also have a us website if you're in the us and this is appealing to you i will link that as well you can get 15 percent off using the discount code planning with crystal again all info down below and you can get a one-off box for as little as 23.99 if you just want a one-off box and you don't want a recurring subscription if you do want a recurring in subscription you get rewards in every third box shipping is always free and there's lots of options if you want to kind of like change the genre that you are subscribed to and stuff like that there's also kids boxes 13.99 on a subscription 16.99 as a one-off box so as i mentioned before in terms of books being destroyed i was like why does this happen because that's why this company started to kind of help with that and to help us get some really reasonably priced books as well so in the UK, around about 200,000 books are published each year, of which some obviously go top of the bestseller list, you see them in all your local bookstores and they do really well. The other kind of 83%, not so much. So lots of books will be produced and then they're just not sold because people don't really know about them, which is always a shame. There's always so many books out there we will probably never get to read that we would actually really enjoy. So it's a shame. So the idea is that instead of these books kind of going to landfill or something like that, we get the opportunity to get brand new books in a box every month or however often we want it at a hugely discounted rate compared to what the books would cost if we purchase them. So in the video, I'm gonna unbox book box and I'm gonna tell you, like I said, my plans for reading in 2023. So in 2022, I read 60 something books, I think it was, but I'd set myself a target of 75 and I just didn't quite get there. I don't know about you, but I have some really great months where I read and read and read, and then I have other months where I don't really get around to it as much for whatever reason. So this year I've set myself a challenge of reading 65 books, which seems a little bit more achievable. I'm gonna link my Goodreads underneath the video. So if you do wanna see what I've been reading and what I thought, you can check it out there. Although disclaimer on this, I don't really write super long reviews. Sometimes I do, but sometimes there's just not much and it's just a star rating, but it gives you an idea of just my thoughts on that book. So, so far in 2023, I've read nine books, the best of which was Stephen King's Joyland. Now, I love Stephen King, and again, disclaimer, something I need to mention right here, right now, everybody thinks, whenever I speak to anyone who reads, <laughs> I mean, most people read, don't they, but some more than others, and I mention Stephen King, they just, the mind just goes, horror, must be talking about horror, scary books, it isn't just about horror. In fact, if you know me on a kind of personal level, you will know I am terrified of horror and things like that, it's just not my thing. However, on a book form, for some reason I can cope with it. But what I'm trying to say is, not all these books are horror. Quite a lot of them aren't horror. They sometimes touch on the supernatural slightly and things of that nature, but that isn't why I read a Stephen King book. I don't read the book because I want to be terrified or anything like that. I read the book because this guy knows how to write books. I mean, the 70 odd books he's written, the amount of bestsellers he's got, the amount of films and TV shows that have come off the back of stories he's written, tells you a lot. I'm a big fan. But the reason why I like reading his book so much is because there's something about his writing that draws me in so much that I literally leave this world and go into the world of whichever book I'm reading. It's incredible. He is one heck of a writer in my opinion. But Joyland, I struggle to describe what this book is about because when I describe it, it sounds really boring, but actually it's brilliant. And the skill I think Stephen King has with his books is that he starts off in a kind of generic we are following this person these characters and things on their kind of day-to-day -day life it's all very normal and then there's obviously a lot more that happens and, and it gets more interesting but I, I find his books really difficult to describe for that reason but joyland is basically about a teenage boy who works at a kind of like fairground theme park type thing called joyland um, over one particular summer and it's a lot to do with the kind of characters he comes in contact with, but it's like other things and like a little bit of 
almost like crime and mystery going on within it as well and it's just a fantastic book fantastic really really liked that book so yes i guess that's my recommendation that's where i'm up to my reading journey those are my plans and that's the book i particularly loved this month onto the book box. So there's some super cute little illustrations inside. 77 million books are destroyed in the UK every year. I mean, I just want to go out there and rescue them. 83% of those books have been pulped before they've been read, which is kind of what I was trying to say before. We want to save these amazing books from being lost in time forever. Every box you get saves amazing books and you discover incredible authors. So thank you for helping us on our mission. And another thing to mention in case you wondered, so long as you are signed up to a subscription, they will not repeat send you any of the same books. So you'll not get any repeat books. The only way that could happen is if you set up a new subscription with a different email address or something like that. But so long as you keep to the same email address and the same account, they will not send you duplicate books. It's what I was trying to say. Let's get into the box. So we get four books in the box. There's a little card here that says subscriber superpowers. Unlocks a surprise gift with every third box. Choose how often you want your boxes if you get a subscription. Swap across the boxes anytime. So like I said, if you want to go from horror or something of that nature to light reads, you can totally do that or the other way around or historical fiction or whatever your jam is, you can totally do that. Pause anytime, as many times as you would like. So lots of options, four books. Let's see what we've got. The box I've chosen is crime, mystery and thriller. Let's see which four books I've got. So the first one is called The Unmaking of Ellie Rook by Sandra Island. It says, Ellie Rook can't wait to leave home. She's had enough of being the kid from the scrapyard, always dirty, running wild and getting into fights, leaving behind her mother, brother and bullying father. She catches the first plane to Europe. But fast forward several years and a grim call from home brings her back. Her mother has been reported missing, presumed drowned. And the witnesses all have different stories. Ellie has to come to terms with the unspoken secrets of her past while unravelling clues in the present. Next up, The Last Justice by Alex Finlay. An assassin guns down the justices as they are hearing a case in the US Supreme Court. Solicitor General Jefferson McKenna, the government's top lawyer, is appointed to the multi-agency commission investigating the murders. As Congress draws battle lines over who will replace the slain justices, the commission follows clue after clue, each one pointing to an unlikely suspect, McKenna himself. In a desperate bid to prove his innocence, McKenna must track down a disgraced law clerk with ties to hidden Saudi assets. But this search just reveals even more corruption and the people with answers keep turning up dead. Now McKenna will discover just how much danger he's in and how far his enemy will go to conceal the truth. So far so good, they are sounding like the sort of books I would totally pick up in a bookshop and definitely going along with the theme we picked. Next, One Dark, Two Light by Ruth Mancini. New Year's Eve, London. Outside the Hope and Glory pub, a man has been left to die. A victim of extraordinary violence, he will never walk or speak again. He remains in hospital, nameless, until criminal defence lawyer Sarah Kellerman walks onto his ward. Sarah barely recognises the man she once worked with. He was honourable and kind. What was he involved in? Who wanted him dead? As she races to uncover the truth, Sarah soon realises this isn't the only man in her life that she never really knew at all. And finally, Platform 7 by Lewis Doherty. Two deaths on Platform 7, two fatalities in 18 months. Surely they're connected. Platform 7 at 4am. Peterborough Railway Station is deserted. The man crossing the covered walkway on this freezing November morning is confident he is alone. As he sits on the metal bench at the end of the platform, it's clear that his choice is strategic. He's as far away from the night staff as he can get. What the man doesn't realise is that he has company. Lisa Evans knows what he has decided. She knows what he is about to do as she tries and fails to stop him walking to the platform edge. No one is more desperate to understand what connects her to this man than Lisa Evans herself. After all, she was the first of the two to die. So they are our four books. So if you're a quick reader, you could definitely get one of these boxes every month. If you're a little bit of a slower reader, maybe don't get as much time to read as you would like, you could just get one every couple of months or just get a one-off box, obviously. That is all up to you. Like I said, 
consider taking advantage of the discount if you do decide to sign up to a box and get yourself 15% off. In terms of value, books are pricey. So this first one, the RRP on this is $8.99. This one is again $8.99, $8.99 and this one is $12.99. So quite the collection there. They always fit very well with whichever theme you've gone for. So crime, mystery, thriller, they're definitely ticking those boxes with these books. So how exciting is this? Really want to go off and read. I love reading. Like I said, it's like escaping to other worlds. When you get a good book, when you get the perfect book, I find I don't want to do anything else but read. So this is kind of getting me in the mood to have a look at these books because they're all, they've all got something going on that's a little bit intriguing, which is kind of what I want and why I chose this genre. So whatever your bag is books wise, there will be an option for you on a box of stories. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. It lets me know you're enjoying the content I'm producing. And I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to be notified when my next video goes live. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.